Insomnia. Hello, everybody. This is another daytime episode of Insomnia Art. Sometimes you got so much insomnia, you stay right up and you're still awake during the day. So, on this episode of Insomnia Art, I'm going to be doing something ver very close to from scratch. I'm going to be drawing jazz musician legend, if you want to go that route, Wingy Manoon or Manone. The pronunciation goes either way. But we're going to be drawing him, and I'm going to just start drawing, and I'm going to start talking. I'm going to hit you guys with some jazz knowledge. I got a picture I'm going to be going by right off camera, but we're going to whip, we're going to whip up Wingy. Got my markers, using my good old Micron pens. Look at that. Look how much you can't see because it's silhouetted. You know what they look like. They're everywhere. So, usually this is going to be a very simple, simple um, cartoon caricature. So, I, as I always say in these episodes, I start with the eyeballs. And as I start, let's talk Wingy. So, Wingy Manoon, or Manoan, was born in Louisiana. He was one of the Louisiana jazz musicians. And when he was very young, he was in a car accident that made him lose his right arm. And that's where he got the nickname Wingy from, is because of that reason. Now, when he went on stage, he would wear a prosthetic arm that would be perpetually connected to the trumpet. It looked like a hook hand like this that was just on the trumpet. Now, it says in a lot of the, the descriptions about him that people didn't even know it was a prosthetic arm. They thought it was real. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't buy that at all. Either that or people back then were really stupid. I'm just being honest. Because here's the way I think about it. I'm watching these videos now from the 30s, the soundies, which were like music videos, but they were music videos for like the 40s and late 30s. When I'm watching those soundies, I um, I notice right away, because it's weird, because here's this one arm, and all it's doing is this on the trumpet, just doing this, not even moving. You could look at that, then it's not even moving. So. I don't know. I think people were just more polite. I think it's the same thing with Liberace. How all the women had crushes on him. Nobody realized that he was gay. Till one guy turned around and said, Hey, Liberace, how come you stand so close behind me? But I think people were just a little more polite and didn't bring things out in the open. Because I could see that it's a, it was a fake arm from a mile away. Let me give you a little zoom on this. Let's zoom in here. Let's get up close and personal with Wingy. There we go. Look at that. Up close and personal with little Wingy. Now, I really like Wingy's music. I think... So, we hear Dixieland jazz. And we think, you know... Almost, like, you know, it almost gets mixed in with Zydeco now. Dixieland jazz. And um, it's really unfortunate because what Dixieland jazz really is is the kind of thing that Wingy, King Oliver, Louis Armstrong, um, all those guys from back then really came up with. You know, they, they all helped to evolve it, mainly really from... from um, this shoulder over here, this was the side with the with the fake arm. And it was always a little bit higher. So I'm drawing it, I'm drawing it higher. If you see a asymmetry in Wingy's chest, that's why. Again, we're just doing it very simple. Very simple. Anyway, but guys like Wingy were there. Right in the beginning of 
Dixieland Jazz when it really was Dixieland Jazz, which to be Dixieland Jazz, it has to consist of a lot of syncopation, okay? What's syncopation? Syncopation is when you have many instruments playing at the same time, all keeping rhythm, although they're playing different things. Now, this isn't like free jazz with a bunch of mooks just blowing their horns, doing whatever they want to do. This is, it's very difficult to play syncopated jazz. And because you all still got to pretty much be playing the same song. You understand? But other than that, it's, um, yeah, okay. Got the old Sharpie out. My trusty Sharpie. We're going to fill in some wingy hair. Dun, 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 dun. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Sometimes you just, just draw a little picture. Now, not everything has to be the Mona Lisa. Now, sometimes it's good to just stretch. I don't really consider this even an exercise. This is just something fun that I don't have to, you know, I'm not going to put a tremendous amount of brain power into it. Just sort of something fun, something loose. I figured I'd share it with you guys. I'm going to give his shoulder some darkness here. Look at that, how pretty. Now I tend to, one single marker strike, I don't tend to like that because it looks like a marker strike and it looks a little cheap. So I'm going to go over here to my side and get one of these Prismacolor jobs. <clears throat> You use the fat end. This marker's got fat ends and pointy ends. There you go, fat end. So we're gonna use the fat end. And you could do a lot with this with this little edge. You know, you could tip it. So watch. I'm gonna start off then, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, you know, you can make it look a little bit more like a painting, make it a little bit rougher looking. Again, it's all in fun. But by making it a little rougher looking, it just sort of gets rid of the fact that it's like rant marker. You know? Now, because he was a trumpet player off to his side here, got a little bit of trumpet action gonna happen. Quick little, let's make a quick little trumpet. Don't forget the handle here. Here's the other thing. We're talking about Dixieland jazz. And you may have heard me talk about this on the podcast. But being that I'm doing a jazz piece here, I'm going to bring it up. So anybody who listens to rock music, we're going to concentrate on rock for a second. Just for a second. We ain't going to spin in this grave too long. So think about rock music. And think about how many different genres there are of rock music you know you got metal you got punk you got classic rock you got math rock you got um the one where everybody wears flannel um grunge you got all the different kinds of rock right well there is that many types of jazz as there are to rock there are that many different subgenres to be a music aficionado about it. There are that many different subgenres of jazz. Okay? It isn't all just noodles. So here's the problem is you turn on if you're not a jazz fan, you turn on public radio, or you see something on PBS or whatever, and it's it's some guy or woman blowing into a horn. Just biddle 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 or sometimes it's slower. Sometimes you get the little bit of um a little bit of Mo Better Blues vibe, which is a good vibe. But the noodles, but you know, people don't people don't get it. And some jazz fans tend to be jerks 
and they they kind of look down on you if you don't get it. If you don't get it, you know, you, you know, and it's it's bullshit. You know, music needs to be enjoyed by everybody. And I feel like there's a maybe a subgenre of jazz that you might really be into. You just you never know what the deal is going to be with all this stuff. So here I go. I'm going to do some cross hatching down the face here. And then I'm going to go like this. There we go. That was my phone buzzing, but we're going to ignore it for now cuz I'm I'm hanging with you guys. Okay, do a little bit. You guys, so yeah. There's all different kinds of subgenres. What's an example? Okay. So original Dixieland jazz could be considered a subgenre, you know? Um, Depression era jazz, bebop, jump blues is a is a little cousin of jazz. What else? You got swing, you got big band, you got jazz fusion, you got acid jazz. The crooners could be jazz, you know, Sinatra, Dino, Tony Bennett, you know, he's in there. Not to mention all the female jazz singers, you know, the vocalist jazz. There's, you know, Lambert Hendricks and Ross were a fun jazz vocal group that took instrumental renditions of songs and put lyrics to them. And they sang all the instrumental parts, but with words. So that's pretty fun. So there's all sorts of jazz out there. It's not just noodles. It's not just um, cartoon music, too. I went to this show and I get it. I kind of I've loosened up on my on my jazz snootiness over the years, but I was at this this show. It was an acoustic band and they were about to do a rendition of Minnie the Moocher. Now, before I continue with this story, there are just certain songs you don't mess with, okay? For anybody who knows, you don't mess with Freddie Mercury vocals. You don't mess with Jim Morrison vocals, for the most part. You know, there are certain singers, there are certain songs that are just so on point that you don't mess with them. You just leave them alone, and you listen to them, and you fight the urge to want to sing them. At the very most, maybe you sing them in the shower when no one's around. That's the most you do with them. And I think that Minnie the Moocher and Cab Calloway are one of those groups. You don't, don't mess with Cab. Just leave him alone. He's a great, one of the greatest entertainers and performers. And the jazz world kind of looks down on Cab. You watch all nine, um, all nine parts of the Ken Burns Jazz Special. They mentioned Cab Calloway for like 30 seconds. Me and a buddy of mine were so pissed off about that. How you could overlook Cab because he wasn't an artist. He didn't go up there on stage and hang up signs like Miles did. No shade on Miles. But Miles Davis would hang up signs in his cool jazz days telling people not to dance. You know what? Go pound salt. People want to dance to music. You know, music's got to be fun. That's why jazz lost the youth. But I'm rambling. And I'm, I'm ranting. I don't want to do that. Anyway, I seen this group and man, they played, they did a version of Minnie the Moocher Man. Whew. But they said, oh, we're going to play some cartoon music. They didn't say nothing about jazz. They, I don't, I'm not even totally sure that they mentioned Cab. I don't quite remember. But man, I was fuming. And I don't get fumed up anymore though. You know, it's not worth it. It's not worth to get annoyed over crap that you can't, uh, crap you can, um, you got nothing, you know, you got nothing to do with it. It's like, you don't know nothing. You got nothing to do with it. Don't worry about it. People want to be, people want to be morons, they'll be morons. It doesn't affect you. That's what I'm learning as time goes on, especially this year. But the other thing about Wingy, so he was a trumpeter. Played a lot of Dixieland, but he also sang a lot. He did a lot of vocals. Very much influenced by Louis Armstrong and Jack Teagarden. 
Jack Teagarden was a trombone player in the Dixieland era, and he continued to play jazz. He was in Louis Armstrong's band, the All Stars, and um, he was a great musician too. I'd recommend him if you're looking for like the era of 20s, 30s into the 40s of jazz. But um, Wingy also sang. He did songs like Ain't It a Shame About Mame. He did a lot of covers of older songs and he jazzed them up. A lot of the older heads and the classical people got a little pissy with him when he would take classical songs and jazz them up and make them about milkshakes and egg creams, which is right up my alley. He also has a very fun song called The Awful Waffle Man. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm over enunciating. But that's a fun song. He also did a version of Achichonia, which is really good. He's a, really a fun musician. If you want to have fun listening to jazz, you watch this one-armed dude swing. Man. And it's funny. Like later, he, he wore the prosthetic hand most of his life. But as he got older, he just... He said, screw it, and he stopped wearing the hand. And he would just hold the trumpet and play it. Just like this, one hand. Yeah, I mean, you're watching this on YouTube. After I'm done drawing here, go check out some Wingy. I got some little, like, I made myself some little pencil, pencil marks here just to guide myself. Let's get rid of those. Because they're stupid. We don't need those. Get them out of here. Some guidelines I made myself before I sat down. Now, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my Prismacolor back. Prismacolor. I'm just gonna, cause this is collar, so I'm just gonna make some. This is where his, his bow tie is. So we're just gonna make some vagaries to insinuate his bow tie. There we go, see? Vagaries. They help with the art. All right, let's get a full shot of old Wingy here. Let's zoom out here. Yoink. So there we have it. A quick episode and a quick ink sketch of jazz artist Wingy Manoon. Don't forget to like and subscribe to these videos of Insomnia Art. And also... While you're on the channel, hop over, check out the Planet Shivers podcast. There's going to be a lot of new stuff happening. With each video, things are getting more streamlined. They're getting better. The podcast is going to be getting video. I'm going to be going crazy for you people. So hang in there. Bring your friends over. And thank you so much if you have subscribed and liked. And even if you're just sitting there watching it and you have no intention of doing anything, I still appreciate you watching Stay healthy, be happy, take it easy, take care of yourself, and take care of somebody else. Wait a minute. There's one more thing I forgot to say. Have you, I'm sure many of you have heard Glenn Miller's In The Mood. If you don't know the song I'm talking about, go look it up and you'll know it. Wingy Manuin actually wrote the original version of Glenn Miller's In The Mood which was called Tar Paper Stomp. I just think this is important. That's why I interrupted the end of my video. He wrote a song called Tar Paper Stomp, which is the exact same head arrangement as Glenn Miller's In The Mood. Glenn Miller snatched from Wingy Manone's composition. Just so you know, I'm just keeping it straight and real. We gotta give credit where credit's due. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else and enjoy yourself. And again, Thanks so much for watching. I hope you check out some other videos. Till next time.